Coming up next, our final news roundup and information overload hour. All right, news roundup, information overload hour, 800 941 Sean, our number if you want to be a part of the program. Um, all right, so Nancy Pelosi's out. I know a sad moment for most of you in this audience. I, 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 I feel your pain. I'm, I know you're suffering today. You're probably down in the dumps. You're probably really upset, crying, some of you, and um, maybe inconsolable. At, 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 on some level, Nancy Pelosi is now stepping down from all leadership in the House of Representatives. Uh, but anyway, uh, she's announced that she will not see, seek re-election for House leadership. Here's what she said. My friends, no matter what title you all, my colleagues, have bestowed upon me, speaker, leader, whip, there is no greater official honor for me than to stand on this floor and to speak for the people of San Francisco. This I will continue to do as a member of the House, speaking for the people of San Francisco, serving the great state of California, and defending our Constitution. And with great confidence in our caucus, I will not seek re-election to Democratic leadership in the next Congress. For me, the hours come for a new generation to lead the Democratic caucus that I so deeply respect. And I'm grateful that so many are ready and willing to shoulder this awesome responsibility. I've been saying I don't think most people really understand the magnitude of Nancy Pelosi giving up that gavel, and maybe it'll, it'll hit people when the moment comes and the gavel is passed. Uh, if you don't think that the majority matters, look at the last two years and the damage and the hearings and January 6th committee. Look, whoever's in power, the majority, they get to pick the, the chairman of the committees. They get to subpoena. They get to go out there and, and they have the power of the purse behind them. Now, are they going to be able to accomplish their agenda that they ran on? No. Are they going to vote on their agenda to show the people in this country that there is an alternative way to this new Green Deal radical socialism? Yes. Uh, but with the power, we just had Jim Jordan on earlier in the program today. Uh, this is going to be a massive investigation into corruption, abuse of power, including whistleblowers, as it relates to the FBI being politicized and the DOJ being weaponized. And it also will result in investigations into the real origins of COVID-19, whether or not your taxpayer dollars that you give to the government, then it will funnel to the NIH of Anthony Fauci and the NIH funnels it to Eco Alliance. And is it even possible American tax dollars sent to the Wuhan Virology Lab ended up creating COVID-19. Our money could have paid for that. Uh, and yet the whole time, everybody knew what was happening in that lab. They knew gain-of-function research took place. Many lied about it. And they also knew that they worked with coronaviruses, but they tried to peddle a fake conspiracy theory about this all coming from the, quote, wet markets that they have in China. Uh, I never believed it, but that's what their claim was. Um, now, there's going to be investigations. Jordan has his investigation into the DOJ and the FBI. And uh, also we have uh, other investigations. COVID-19 investigation origins will take place. And Hunter Biden and his laptop are all going to take place. That's part of the power that goes to the party that in the majority, which is a big deal. Anyway, joining us now is uh, Greg Jarrett. He's written a great piece about all of this. Uh, the Biden, the brief, Biden gloats, but the coming probes will wipe the smirk from his face. Uh, I think that's extremely well said. I, I heard on Fox earlier today when I was watching that, in fact, they've been preparing for these investigations now for some time and how they're going to defend themselves against these investigations. I don't know if there is a defense for the Hunter Biden laptop. I don't think there is a defense when you have all these whistleblowers uh, from the FBI and the DOJ. I don't, I, I don't think there's going to be a defense for the origins of COVID-19. No, I think what they'll do instead is what uh, the White House and the Treasury Department have been doing for a long time now, and that is obstruct. Uh, the oversight duties of Congress. O oversight is a critical function of Congress. Americans expect and deserve honesty in public officials, Sean. And when our elected leaders like Joe Biden and his family enrich themselves while jeopardizing national security, trusting government, 
is lost. And without accountability, respect for the rule of law vanishes. So I think you're you're going to see a variety of investigations into the Biden administration, the Afghanistan debacle, the secret censorship program, the cover-up of the pandemic's origin, systemic corruption at the FBI and the Department of Justice, the mismanagement and malfeasance at the border. But, but at the top of the list, and, you know, James Comer at Oversight in Congress has been preparing for this, is the investigation into Joe and Hunter Biden. Today they issued a 31-page, uh, very thorough staff report. It's an interim report. I read it. It contains everything that I've written about for the last two years that you and I have talked about for the last two years, that the Bidens have banked tens of millions of dollars selling out America to foreign governments and businesses, Hunter Biden, the point person for the family's criminal enterprises, selling access and promises of influence to Russia, China, Ukraine, Romania, Kazakhstan, other countries over which Joe Biden exerted clout. You know, the amazing thing is is that they dovetail together, don't they? Because uh, the FBI has had uh, the Hunter Biden laptop for the longest period of time. What are we going on now? Over two years. I think they've actually had it closer to three years. And all this information has been out there and available and in their hands, and they haven't done a thing with it. And when, in fact, uh, this became an issue three weeks before the presidential election in 2020, uh, by that time, they should have known darn well that, in fact, it was authentic and that Hunter Biden was, in fact, in trouble uh, and they certainly know all of the references and implications of his own father on that laptop. Oh, absolutely. It, the, the laptop is a damning indictment of Joe Biden's complicity in these influence peddling schemes. We're talking about fraud and bribery and Foreign Influence uh, Corrupt Practices Act and fair violations. Even racketeering is, is a potential here. And this is where, Sean, the whistleblowers are so vital. They've courageously stepped forward to reveal the political bias that's infected uh, these investigations at the Department of Justice and the FBI that were effectively shut down to protect Joe Biden. And and the two biggest sycophants and and suck-ups, uh, Attorney General Merrick Garland and Christopher Wray, director of the FBI, they've been running, as you so aptly have put it, a protection racket to fend off any serious criminal consequences. All of that ends now. As the Republicans take the gavel, they not only receive the chairmanship of these committees, but important subpoena power. And I, I predict they'll have to go to court to get, for example, the 150 suspicious activity reports detailing the millions of dollars flowing into the bank accounts of the Biden family. Uh, You know, that's critical evidence. And, you know, it's always been longstanding policy for Treasury to turn that over to Congress upon request. Joe Biden reversed it and said, no, as to... Our family's uh, suspicious activity reports, you're not allowed to have them. Remember the 51 former intelligence officials that said, oh, it has all the markings of Russian disinformation just before the 2020 presidential election as it relates to the Hunter Biden laptop. Uh, It's funny because Miranda Devine earlier today uh, wrote one of them on Twitter, uh, John Cipher, and then she had to point out that the guy blocked her after I asked him about the, quote, dirty 51 letter that he signed, which falsely claimed Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian, was a Russian disinformation uh, operation. The letter was actually info op to interfere with the 2020 election, uh, one of many intelligence atrocities, she rightly points out. And, you know, then, of course, you can, you can go to another issue, and that is the complicity of social media. You know, it was Twitter, you know, literally banning the story from being shared. Facebook, the same thing. Um, are they going to look into whether or not those are in-kind donations to the Democratic Party by withholding 
pertinent information, letting the public decide on their own whether or not something is valid or not? Yeah, I mean, that was so crooked and unconscionable. And, you know, the 51 former Intel people uh, talk about collusion to interfere in a presidential election. They knew that when they put their signature to that document claiming, oh, it, that the laptop, it's just Russian disinformation. They knew that was a lie. And none of them have had the honesty or decency to admit that they misrepresented and deceived the American public in advance of an election. Uh, none of them have had uh, the decency to apologize. No mea culpas, not from a single one of them. These are horrible, miserable human beings, uh, and Americans deserve to treat them with disdain. Quick break. More with Greg Jarrett on the other side. 800-941-SEAN on number. Uh, listen, our friends at the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, remember, it was born on America's darkest day, 9-11-2001, and the Tunnel to Towers Foundation, they're helping America's heroes. They've been doing it ever since. And when a first responder or military service member doesn't come home and young kids are left behind, Tunnel to Towers pays the mortgage of the family. Uh, they lift that financial bo burden. They bring the family stability. And for catastrophically injured vets and first responders, Tunnel to Towers, they build mortgage-free smart homes, giving our most severely injured heroes the ability to live more independent lives. And through their Veterans Homelessness Program, Tunnel to Towers now is providing housing and services to all these homeless vets all across the country. More than 500 helped in 2022 alone uh, because, look, every vet who honorably served our country, whether in peacetime or at war, uh, they need our our nation's gratitude. Anyway, they all put their lives on the line for their country, our communities. They need our help now. The entire Hannity team is on board. We hope you'll join us. They're asking for 11 bucks a month. Go to their website, the letter T, the number two, the letter T dot org. The letter T, the number two, the letter T dot org for the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Broadcasting coast to coast, border to border, and all over America. This is the Sean Hannity Show. All right, we continue with Greg Jarrett analyzing all of these investigations that will be now starting with the new Congress. You think that based on what we know now, does Christopher Ray survive this? Does Merrick Garland survive this? As, as long as Joe Biden's in the White House, absolutely. Uh, he needs them. He needs them to continue to cover up the evidence. And they will certainly do so. They've been fending off all efforts uh, by, I think, the U.S. attorney in Delaware to uh, bring charges. If there are charges, I think uh, pressure has been applied uh, to make them very light, sort of a sweetheart deal, probation, back taxes, but forget about things like fraud, bribery, influence peddling, and, and all of the other serious but, charges. Uh, Greg, I mean, earlier today in this, what, 31 pages of Comer, I mean, they're identifying 50 countries that the Biden family syndicate have done business with. Um, he said that Biden absolutely lied when he said he had nothing to hide during the campaign and that he never talked to his son one time about his foreign business dealings. We have uh, photo evidence we have on Hunter's laptop, reference after reference implicating his father. Uh, Comer saying he personally participated in the meetings, the phone calls, documents show he was a partner with access to an office. To be clear, Joe Biden is the big guy. Tony Bobulinski, by the way, will be on Hannity tonight. Uh, and the yeah. investigation showing that the Bidens dealt with some of the U.S.'s greatest adversaries, including planning to sell one of the largest sources of cobalt for electric, electric vehicles to the Chinese uh, and, and everything in between. I mean, I've never seen anything like this, especially from a guy that had no experience. His name is Zero Experience Hunter. Yeah, that's why I bring up RICO, uh, the Racketeering Corrupt Influences Practices Act, both civil and criminal. Uh, the evidence on the laptop alone incriminates uh, Joe Biden as complicit in his son's schemes. And it's always been ludicrous uh, for Joe to claim he knew nothing about these nefarious dealings, never spoke with Hunter about them, because there were so many of them, and their actions were so pervasive 
in collecting millions of dollars from countries. I mean, I, my estimate is that more than $100 million poured into the Biden family coffers with Joe as an expected beneficiary, as you point out, the big guy. Photographs and emails uh, confirm it, sort of visitor logs uh, during the Obama White House, the elder Biden meeting constantly with his son's partners, uh, one of them logging 19 visits to the White House uh, to visit Joe Biden. So, you know, and, the, and, the and Comer was compelling. clear. This is an investigation of Joe Biden, the president of the United States, and why he lied to the American people about his knowledge and participation in his family's international business schemes. He said, we'd love to talk to people in the Biden family, specifically Hunter and Joe. And uh, he goes on to say, our investigation is about Joe Biden, and we already have evidence that would point to the fact that Joe Biden was involved with Hunter Biden on these issues. And as you say, I think in the end, it's going to be a lot more than $100 million. Uh, I, I talked to an investigative reporter who estimated it's closer to $200 million, uh, which is why it would be so easy for, you know, Hunter Biden to simply, you know, pay a huge amount in back taxes and penalties to get rid of the whole uh, criminal uh, charges uh, by the U.S. attorney in Delaware. So, you know, um, it, it's abundantly clear that Joe Biden was involved in this. I mean, you know, they flew together to China on Air Force Two and started immediately. Yeah. Uh, and 10 days later, they the, get the deal with the Bank of right. China. Right. Uh, yeah. Only because of the constraints of time. I got to let you go. But uh, this is going to get very interesting, very fast. Uh, Greg Jarrett, great analysis. And uh, everything you've been reporting on is now coming to fruition, and it's all going to be proven true. Uh Newt Gingrich here, and I'd like to invite you to listen to my podcast, Newt's World. Most people know me as the former Speaker of the House, but I'm also a historian with a wide range of interests. I enjoy talking with fascinating people across a variety of topics. On Newt's World, we've had some extraordinary guests join us, like former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Ending the war in Vietnam was a necessity in order to help heal the divisions in the country. John Clifton, the CEO of Gallup. The world has been winning the war against hunger for four decades. In 2014, it switched. We have a serious hunger crisis. And House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. What I've really found the Republican Party to be, it's the party of the people, the working people of America. I release three episodes of Newt's World Podcast every week, and I hope you'll find my conversations engaging and informative and hopefully, we'll both learn something new. Listen to Newt's World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Newt Gingrich here, and I'd like to invite you to listen to my podcast, Newt's World. Most people know me as the former Speaker of the House, but I'm also a historian with a wide range of interests. I enjoy talking with fascinating people across a variety of topics. On Newt's World, we've had some extraordinary guests join us like former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. Ending the war in Vietnam was a necessity in order to help heal the divisions in the country. John Clifton, the CEO of Gallup. The world has been winning the war against hunger for four decades. In 2014, it switched. We have a serious hunger crisis. And House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy. What I've really found the Republican Party to be, it's the party of the people, the working people of America. I release three episodes of Newt's World Podcast every week, and I hope you'll find my conversations engaging and informative, and hopefully we'll both learn something new. Listen to Newt's World on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcast, or wherever you get your podcast. Uh, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Quick break, right back. Hi, 25 now to the top of the hour. Thanks for being with us. Uh, 800 941 Sean, you want to be a part of the program? To our busy, busy phones we go. Lee is in Louisiana. Lee, hi. How are you? Glad you called. Doing great. I'm a 10 year listener. Basically, I'm kind of frustrated, but I wanted to get straight to the point. Uh, basically, I'm an independent voter. I voted for Trump, and I, I love his policies. I think he was doing great for the country. But I feel the Democrat Party has really put a tag on him as being toxic, as as being a person that's against our democracy. I just wanted to know, where do we go from here? What's next? What, how do we combat this? Because I feel they're right on the verge of getting to a one-party rule in the country. 
Uh, the answer is the American people have, I, I guess, are going to have to suffer a lot until finally the suffering has become so unbearable they realize. Uh, I think I want to go back to $2 a gallon gasoline. I think I want secure borders. Um, I, I think we need to refund the police and get rid of these idiotic no bail laws. Um, I, I think I want my kid to learn reading, writing, math, science, history, and computers and, and get to that point. Um, I can't control the electorate. I can only inform people that choose to listen and choose to watch my shows. And we try and get the information out there. Look, I am not at all without hope. Um, there's certain things about this election that are odd to me. I can't figure it out. I think there's a new paradigm that has emerged. I don't know how much of it might have to do with redistricting. Um, I don't know how much of, of what happened may have had to do with young people. It seems like young people, the issue of abortion had a big, big, was a big factor in this election. Young people may be hoping that their student loan forgiveness program, that that would be free cash to them. They seem to come out and negate some of the older voters. And, and usually young people, are not they don't tend to come out in the numbers they came out in. You know, I, I'm not going to use the word autopsy because it's kind of cliche-ish. Uh, but uh, but I certainly want to examine and, and do a deeper dive into the numbers in this election and and find out exactly where, you know, why things went down the way they, they that they did. I believe that my theory of accelerated migration is real and Republicans really need to pay attention to that. Sadly, I also believe that Republicans, if they if they can't get the system of voting that I want, I want voting Election Day to be a national holiday. I want partisan observers to watch all of the voting start to finish and then all of the vote counting start to finish uh, like Canada does and France does and Great Britain does and all these other countries do uh, and and make exceptions for the military and people that are are traveling that can't vote on Election Day. They should have an opportunity to have the voices heard and they can apply for an absentee ballot and the sick and the elderly, et cetera, infirmed. But short of that, um, we're now stuck in a system where it seems very clear that all over the country, Republicans don't trust this early voting system and they're not taking advantage of it or mail-in voting and, th and they don't trust that and they're not taking advantage of it. And then you're starting out these campaigns and, you know, all of a sudden you, election night comes around and, and boom, all this 30% 30, 30 down on election day. You can't Absolutely. start out an election that way. Now, unless and until Republicans get control of enough governorships and enough state houses and then hopefully have the right motivations to have a fair system in place, this is the system we got. There's nothing I can do. I can't snap my finger and change it, nor can anybody else. So if that's the system that they have so passionately embraced, we've got to unfortunately play the game with the rules that we're stuck with. And I mean, we're stuck with bad rules. What happened is there's no excuse for Arizona, no excuse for Alaska, no excuse for California, no excuse for Nevada. And and the absolute disaster that unfolded again after the election. But, you know, that's my best answer to you. I know it's maybe not the perfect answer, but it's not what I want. I can tell you that. And, and voter ID should be a critical component in all of this. I want integrity and I want confidence in the results and and that would apply fairly to everybody. Every, it would have so much integrity, nobody would ever question the results ever again. Definitely. I think everybody wants this. Uh, you know, most people who want fair elections want the same thing. It seems like the Democrat Party has circumvented that process. But I thank you for your optimism and hope, and you're a great American. Thank you, my friend, and I'm glad. Uh, don't wait 10 more years to call in. You're welcome anytime. We'd love to have you back. Thank you, sir. Uh, Alex. North Carolina, you're next on the Sean Hannity Show. Hey, Sean, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. Thanks for taking my call. So uh, I uh, thank you for your show, and I'll just get to the point. Um, I know Trump announced that he's going to you know, run for president again. I really want us to really consider those who are conservative. Uh, you know, the most he can do is one term, four years. That's all he's got. And we need to consider maybe rallying behind someone that can give us two terms. You see what Joe Biden has done. You see what the state of the country's in. We need someone that can go the distance. And I don't hear anyone bringing that point up. Now, I know Ron DeSantis hasn't officially announced that he's running, but I really think we need to consider someone like that that has shown that he can, you know, lead his state well and, and provide results and not get behind the celebrity 
of Trump if if that's if if that's what people are doing just because they're going to well, vote. Well, let me let me throw Trump. another alternative at you. What if we have the presidency for three terms? You know, <laughs> uh, look, I I think yeah, well, I think your instincts are. I think Ron DeSantis has done a phenomenal job for the state of Florida. Uh, I think Donald Trump as president, his policies were tremendously successful, and and. Ultimately, again, I only have one vote in all of this. It's going to be, you know, primary voters that decide in Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina, Super Tuesday. I mean, here we go again, right? Um, it's a little early for me to really want to start down this road, but um, the president did make his announcement. But um, I'm all in favor of any strong, solid conservative leading this country to prosperity. And I think we... We look. We know how to be energy independent. We have the resources to do it. Uh, we know that less uh, bureaucracy and lower taxes work. We know how to control our borders. Uh, we know what a classical education means for our kids. We know what it means. We know how to keep people safe and secure and enforce law and order in this country. These are not complicated issues, and it's just a matter of having the right people and the right positions of power that'll that'll get the job done it's not really it's I, it's not yeah, that complicated sean, I, sean I, can i ask you a question though i know you say the right people and i completely agree with you and i think trump was crucial for 2016 and what he did and defeating hillary and everything else but wh can you speak to the already name calling a candidate who has i mean a, a politician who hasn't even put his hat in yet i mean it, where is the class that Ronald Reagan had? Where are our leaders that can have show some restraint without resulting to name calling? I just think that's so. Un, it's, it was disheartening to hear that. Can you listen? I that? mean, you know, everybody knows Donald Trump. He's a known commodity, if you will. He's a all right. So with somebody that fights like he does, uh, you know, comes moments like this. I think back to the first campaign and his comments about John McCain. They, they come to mind. Um, but people know what they're getting with, with Donald Trump. They also know what they're getting in terms of policy success. You know, you're going to get the border wall finished and you know, you're going to have secure borders. You know that you're going to have constitutionalists, uh, you know, pick from a list he gives you ahead of time. You know that you're going to have lower taxes. You know, you're going to, regain energy independence and that that's up to you to balance that at, out in your head i'll take the guy personally with the mean tweets uh that occasionally uh says things that offend people uh like you know the media what do you say about the media or threat to democracy or something like that they got all bent out of shape about <clears throat> but i'll also um or you know you can go in another direction it's a little early for me but I just want somebody that's going to go to Washington and I don't mind somebody that's willing to break a few things, you know, plates in the kitchen to get the job done and cook a great meal and get the country on track. That doesn't bother me. With you, Sean, I just think that his arrow should be for the people that are in opposition to policies and ideology, not the people that are on the same I, side. I, I, would, I would tend to agree with you. You know, I, I think in that sense, he could bring more people over to his side. Some people you know, feign outrage. I'm not as outraged about this. I grew up in New York. I don't know. Maybe it's because of that. And uh, that is not uncommon where I grew up. And interestingly, it's where he grew up. It's it's fairly common that that you fight back. He's got a, but a you know, and Ron DeSantis in his own ways a fighter. Um, I've watched him take on the media and be a force of nature. He doesn't take their crap either. And nor should either one of them. Anyway, one of the great things Republicans have going for them, in my view, is we've got a lot of stars in the Republican Party. I can name a lot of people that are stars. I can't name any in the Democratic Party. Who's who's next? Joe Biden? Gavin Newsom? You know, tell me the next Democratic Nancy Pelosi going to come back? You know, where is the Democratic Party? Is it going to be Liz Cheney? You know, or she's just going to run independent to try and hurt the Republican Party as much as she possibly can completely forgetting that the Democrats and the media tried to call her father a murderer, a war criminal, and a crook. Um, interesting times we live in. Anyway, uh, let's go to Rick is in Florida, uh, the free state of Florida. Rick, how are you? Glad you called. Good, good. Thank you for taking my call. I'm actually sitting here mourning the loss of Nancy as speaker, but with that said, <laughs> I, hope, um, are you okay? I, I hope that What's that? Are you okay? Do you need, do you need yeah, a little? I'll get through the day. I'll get through yeah. the day. But 
I, I do hope the committees that are coming in to invest. Well, I'm going to send over a, a, a little, you know, comfort animal, a stuffed animal. I'll have it, you know, brought right over to your house. That would be nice. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Soak up the tears. But I, I do hope that oh. the committees that come in will actually get something done, um, you know, and, and really not just let it hang out there. But the, one of, the reason why I called yesterday, I was listening to you with Bill O'Reilly talking about the purple states and the mass migration from the north to the south. And right. I, ca I call it south. accelerated migration. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's a big, the big sucking sound, the vacuum. I mean, it, they're moving at a rate of, I think, three to one or something, people moving out versus moving in. And I think the purple states, what's going to happen is the tax base is going to be eroded. Therefore, they're going to have to raise taxes. The crime is going to go, continue to go on. And people are going to probably say enough's enough and start looking. They're, the they're already saying it. I mean, the state of Florida, I mean, the migration is massive. It is ma same with Texas, same with the Carolinas, same with Tennessee. They're leaving. And, and yeah. I say accelerated migration because it all got accelerated. People got fed up with the shutdowns. They got fed up with the mandates. Uh, they got fed up working at home. They got fed up with their kids not having in-school learning. And they said, I'm out of here. And and now that means that these states that I just mentioned are redder, but it also means that those, quote, swing states, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan, come to mind, they, they now are that much more difficult as they lose conservative population to these redder states. And, and it's going to be harder for anybody to win the presidency as a result of this. Yeah, I was thinking that in, in those terms that what will happen is, again, people will need to make up that tax revenue. The states will need to make up that tax revenue, but raise taxes. And you're you're going to have to find a way to get more people